Welcome to Thought for the Day on this first day of the third lockdown of this strange pandemic that's transformed our, our world and our lives over the last uh, last year or so. And I'm sorry this is going out a little bit late. There were a number of conversations that needed to be had in connection with the lockdown. I, mean, I haven't quite, wasn't quite able to record it in time, but hopefully since you can't go anywhere today, you'll have a, a chance to, to watch it at some point during the, during the day. Well, we're coming close to the end of this series of reflections on Christmas carols. Uh, tomorrow is, is Epiphany, the, the 12th day of Christmas. And I'll be thinking, looking at something slightly different then, and we'll re resume the normal pattern of thoughts of the day on Thursday. But as yesterday we looked at the, the carol, carol that starts traditionally a carol service, once in Royal David City. Today we're going to look at the carol that ends it. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. And it's an interesting carol. It's written by Charles Wesley. Apparently, within a year of Charles Wesley being converted, within a year of becoming a Christian, he had written a number of hymns, but including, th including three. One, Hark the Herald Angels Sing for Christmas, Christ the Lord is Risen Today for Easter, and Hail the Day that Sees Him Rise for Ascension Day. So he, he'd, sung him, he'd written hymns that would be almost and certainly ever since associated with those three great events in the life of our Lord. And Hark the Herald Angels Sing is probably the, the most famous of all of them. And it's quite a deep uh, theological hymn, maybe not surprising given, that, given who wrote it. Uh, there's a lot of ideas there, hard to, to put a very clear structure on it, but the three verses we sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Glory to the Newborn King, uh, I think the centre of that is the idea that a king has been born. The, the, the fifth line, joyful all ye nations rise, you've all got your own kings, but rise and join the triumph of the, of the skies to praise the one who is king of all, the one who's been born. So the first verse says a king has been born, Hark, peril angels sing glory to the newborn king. The second verse says that the Messiah, God's Messiah, God himself has come. Christ, a name for word for Messiah, by highest heaven adored. Christ, the everlasting Lord, the Messiah, late in time, in the last days, as the Bible often puts it. He is, behold him come, that he has been born, offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh, the Godhead see. So here is God himself, but veiled, covered in human flesh. Uh, as he was born as a baby, we see the, the skin, the flesh, the, the body of the baby, but in there is the Godhead, God himself. Hail the incarnate deity, God incarnate, God with us, made, made physical among us. And it's God's will to do this, pleased as man with man to dwell. God is pleased to come and live with us as a man, as a human being. Jesus, our Emmanuel, Emmanuel, God is with us. So the first one, God is a new king, God, uh, a king is born. Second, God himself is born in the flesh. And the third verse talks about really how that, how that affects us, what happens as we hear that he's now the, the heaven-born Prince of Peace, the, the Son of Righteousness, bringing light and life to all things. Uh, he lays his glory by, but he is born that man no more may die. He is born in a way that changes our relationship with life and death. Born to raise the sons of earth. Born to give them second birth. Born, he is born that we might be born again. And so the, the, the theme that kind of runs through the carol is the theme of being born. A king is born. God himself is born. So that we might be born again. Wonderful idea of birth going through it, just as the idea of children ran through once in Royal David City. But I said that the three verses that we sing, because actually we don't quite sing all the carol. There were two further verses uh, in the original version that take the story on, because the story doesn't really end just with the birth, it carries on. The fourth verse goes like this. It says, Come, desire of nations, come. 
fix in us thy humble home. Not only we be born, but God comes to live in us. Rise, the woman's conquering seed, bruise in us the serpent's head. Overcome the power of, of evil that has been at work in the world since Adam and Eve. Now display thy saving power, ruin nature now restored. Now in mystic union join thine to ours and ours to thine. It's as we start to pray that this second birth would take effect in us. And then the, the final verse, Adam's likeness, Lord, efface. As Jesus comes, we are moved from being made, or oh, we're still made, if we're still Adam's children, but we're made now restored into the image of God that, as we were made to be. Stamp thy image in its place. Second Adam, final Adam from above, reinstate us in thy love. Let us thee, lo let us thee though lost, regain. Thee the life the inner man, O oh, to all thyself in part, formed in each believing heart. So the, the one we, we sing ends, very rousing and appropriate end, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. But there are two more verses, maybe good verses to say as a prayer. Look, look them up afterwards. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll post them in the comments on, on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, and use them as a prayer that the truth of Christmas might be a life-changing truth for you. So God bless you, and I'll see you again uh, tomorrow, 12th, 12th night, 12th day of Christmas, and I have, hope you have a, a good day as you adjust to the new, new reality of today. God bless.